we'll just jump right in. The team with the best projected win total in 2024, the San Francisco 49ers, the defending NFC champs. They went 12 and 5 last year, and their win total is 11 and a half. So, Mon, you going over or under on the Niners? Fortunately, I'm going under, man. It's it's a lot of weird stuff coming out of there right now. So you got the Trent Williams holdout. You got this IU contract situation. Um, I'm definitely more concerned if like Trent Williams like holds out longer term, where he like because he could hold out the entire season if he wanted to, or he could just say I'm retiring, right? And that kind of puts the Niners in a bind. And then it's just it's just like a weird energy coming out of camp camp this year for, with the Niners, um, like with the whole IU situation as well. So it's just. I don't know. feels kind of a little bit like a Super Bowl hangover slightly. Um, if Trent Williams doesn't hold out, I think we hit right there around 11 wins. Um, if he does hold out, I think we lose like two, three wins off that. And then it might, you might be looking at just barely making the playoffs here. I was kind of leaning towards the under for the reasons that you mentioned, but um, I didn't want you to think I was a hater. (laughs) So um, I just, I understand the energy around the team is weird. The Ike situation, like you said, I think we talked about it yesterday. The, I think the more alarming situation um, is probably Trent Williams and his holdout. I did not see that coming. That wasn't really a story even, you know, until a couple of days ago. So I, but despite all that, I'm still going to go with the over. Um, I think their division is is tough, but I think the NFC as a whole is kind of weak. So with the talent they have, I think their defense is still going to be amazing. Obviously, they have a ton of blue chippers. We don't need to name all the, the stars they have on defense. I do think the Trent Williams situation gets figured out before the IU situation because obviously he's a, a more important player as your franchise left tackle. So I'm I'm going to go with the over on the Niners. Didn't see that coming from you, Khaled. <laughs> well I, again i didn't want you to think i was a hater i, I was right, leaning fair, under, fair, but fair. we'll see uh all right next the detroit lions uh they went 12 and 5 lost in the nfc championship to the san francisco 49ers they look like one of the best teams in the nfc one of the best teams in the league this is probably one of the hottest teams in the nfl uh their projected win total surprisingly only 10 and a half maybe because the division is going to be tougher i don't know but uh, what did you have for the Lions here? Definitely have them going over here because I think they they were more they got imp- uh, some improvement here on the secondary with like Carlton Davis things like that. They added what well, Marcus Davenport onto the line as well. So defense I think will be slightly improved. Offense is a juggernaut. It's still one of the best offenses in the NFL. So I don't see them going downhill for any anytime soon there. And then I think you know you'll you'll see some improvement from guys like Jamison Williams things like that. Um. And they didn't, they didn't lose much, right? So on the offensive side or, or the defensive side of the ball. So I think they'll be just as good as they were last year. So I think 11, 12 wins is fair for them. Exactly. Yeah, I think 11 to 13 even is, is realistic. Like you said, the offense is a juggernaut. It's just kind of funny to think of a Jared Goff offense. Well, I guess he was pretty good in, in, uh, in L.A. But yeah, the guy on the screen, Amon Ross St. Brown, one of the best receivers in the NFL. They have a great running back group. Everything is leaning towards a, another appearance in the NFC Championship game, maybe in you know a Super Bowl win, if, especially or a Super Bowl appearance, at least if the Niners uh, are on the downturn with some of the drama that they're having. I feel like this is almost too easy, but it just, you know, sometimes, sometimes it is. I don't know. <laughs> but on the surface, and the fact that they were able to hold on to their offensive coordinator, who was a hot candidate uh, in the head coaching search, I think that shows a lot of commitment. Dan Campbell is maybe not the best situational coach or X's and O's guy, but these guys love playing for him and they're going to be motivated. So I think we, we're both in agreement on the over here. Next, this is kind of a controversial team. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, they started off hot last year, but we all kind of thought they were paper tigers. They fell apart after getting smacked up by the Niners at home. And a lot of their issues on defense and on, on the offense were kind of laid bare late in the season. They had a chokehold on the NFC East, ended up losing it to the Cowboys late in the season, I think on a tiebreaker. And they come back with a new defensive coordinator. They lose Jason Kelsey, who is maybe the best center in the league. 
maybe one of the best centers of all time. So their projected win total, 10 and a half. Where are you going for the Eagles here? I'll I'll take the over. I'll, I I see him right there back again at 11 and 6 wins. Um, I mean, like you said, right towards the second half of that season, we saw them kind of have a lot of problems on offense and defense, lose some games they shouldn't have lost, that type of stuff. But I think they're a really good regular season team. They added a more legit running back here in Saquon Barkley, um, you know, to bring some more uh, uh, versatility to the offense. I don't think they really got worse on defense. They shipped out uh, Redick, but he he was apparently holding out there with the Jets, uh, things like that. So I I think they're trying to they'll they'll be fine. They'll clean up some of this stuff, and maybe maybe it gets to them again at the end of the season. Maybe, but I I think they they're good enough to get to eleven wins here. I'm with you on this. I think they've had a pretty drama free off season compared to the Cowboys, who you know are, are going to be next. Uh, I know Jason Kelsey losing him is going to be big, but it's going to be, I think, a lot of the same. They just have so much talent. You mentioned Saquon Barkley. They might have the best offensive skill group in the NFL, maybe after the Niners. Uh, we'll see what happens with Ayuk. But you have an all-pro type guy in A.J. Brown. You have a potential all-pro Devontae Smith. You have a guy that, when healthy, is one of the best running backs ever, which I don't think is crazy to say. And you would expect some improvement on defense. So. It's it's a slight over. I do think they do finish eleven and six again, but I do think that's good enough to win the division because it's the NFC East. Nobody ever repeats in the NFC East, so I think it's going to be a flip flop once again with with the Cowboys. All right. Speaking of the Cowboys, last year they went twelve and five. They uh, pipped the Eagles to the NFC East division title. Late in the season, I think the Eagles lost to the Cardinals and a couple other really bad teams at the end of the the year there kind of fell apart. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, they fell apart in the playoffs to the uh, upstart Green Bay Packers team. And it's been a long, dramatic offseason. Nobody knows what's going to happen with Dak Prescott long term. CeeDee Lamb was a holdout for a long time. He just got paid. But who knows what kind of shape he's in. Their win total, nine and a half. Seems a little low, but maybe uh, people love the drama surrounding this team. So where are you going with the Cowboys here? I'm going over here as well. Um, I think, you know, the Cowboys can get to 10 wins here, even with all the drama with Dak and whether he's getting paid or not. He's still he's still a pro. He'll come in. He'll he'll do his thing. Cowboys always a great regular season team for the most part with Dak at quarterback. Uh, they paid CeeDee Lamb, right? So Lamb's paid. Running back situation kind of weird out there, but seems like they're just going to go, you know, with the with the like, you know, 20 2015 All-Stars of Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott right here. Um so we'll, and and I guess they got Rico out there, so we'll see how I think the offense is going to be fine. Their defense is always top-notch, so I I I think, you know, you can easily pencil them in for 10 wins and, you know, maybe they maybe they challenge the Eagles here, I don't know, but definitely I, I can see them there at 10 wins. Yeah, if this was 10 and a half, I probably would have gone under. But the nine and a half, you're like, okay, 10 wins. That's still respectable. They did lose Dan Quinn, who's now uh, in Washington. So, but they still have a ton of talent all over that defense. They still have Micah Parsons, who's like a probably a perennial defense player of the year candidate. You assume they're getting Trayvon Diggs back, who missed most of last year. And again, I think this offense, I know a lot of people love to hate on Dak, and it, there's a lot of reasons to hate on Dak as a playoff quarterback. But like you said, they're a machine in the regular season. I think aside from the season when he got hurt and he basically shattered his ankle, they're basically, you can almost guarantee that they're going to win 10 games at, at least with, with Dak. So it's hard to argue against that. Again, if it was 10 and a half, I'd probably take the under, but at nine and a half, I'm, I'm going to go with, with the over. 